Hey, this is Kristen with Collision Hub, and I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk to you about a special company in our industry that solves some of our most niche problems and hardest problems, and that's what to do with some of the wiring harnesses and connectors that are damaged in collision repair. So we've stopped by to talk to Aeromotive about, man, just what all you do. It's just endless when it comes to electronics. Talk, walk us through it. Sure, sure. First, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity for my Collision Hub. I appreciate that. We go back a long way. I know. I've been yeah. using the product for, I want to say 10 years now fixing Easily. cars, saving cars yes. I like to say. Yeah, when we first met in Arkansas. Yeah. And since then we've added a lot of inventory and developed a lot of new product. But the, the core business is manufacturing and reconditioning wire harness assemblies. And now the wire harness assembly is the complete wire harness that runs through the vehicle. Some of them are broken down for headlight assemblies only. Some are uh, isolated to the engine compartment, maybe a dash. But we're able to take those harness assemblies, strip them down, and build them back up again. We have developed inventory now over the years where we do have some in stock so we can easily swap them out and make sure we have a good part number match You get it back into the uh, shop's hands for installation. Now that's great. So when a lot of times when we think about some of these impacts um, and some of these wiring harnesses are damaged, we're instantly thinking a lot of times total loss. And if I go the route of purchasing the new harness and all that labor that's involved in that, I am sometimes looking at totals. But with what you guys do, we're saving a lot of cars. Yeah. When you said total loss, I cringe. Yeah. Because I get that a lot. And we don't want that to happen. The shop doesn't want it to happen. It's a lose-lose for everybody. And with these harness assemblies now starting to mount up into thousands of dollars, and the R&R &R time necessary to remove them, you could easily total a vehicle. So when we come into a harness uh, situation, we're coming in at about 50% of list cost. Now that's pretty substantial. But what we're finding, when the shop calls and tells us that they need a harness assembly, we ask them what the extent of the damage is, and most of the time, Kristen, it's a connector. Ah. Yeah. Very rarely do we go into a harness situation. Now, we do have rules for that, though. Uh, we like to call it the six inch and six wire lead rule, six and six. So if you go over more than six wires damaged in a harness assembly, you should start thinking reconditioning. Because when you start splicing or putting splices into a harness assembly, especially when they start to mount up, you end up with a big meatball effect. And there's uh, an EMF, an electromagnetic force that builds around these splices that starts to interfere with the circuits. So we try to limit it to the six and six rule. So no, that's a good point, and I know a lot of times I was able to get, you know, you helped me out on a lot of cars, getting just the headlight connectors, what I used to like to call my old pigtails, right. and that saved a lot of cars. So for shops looking at it, you guys don't just do the whole harness, you have an assortment of connectors and pigtails and things that would save cars on their daily basis. Right. You know, we need the inventory to build the harnesses. So when we started the business, which is now in 15 years, and we started processing the harness assemblies, so we were building inventory of connectors. Then when the phone started ringing, we started realizing that these folks need connectors. They don't always need the harness assembly. So now we're up to over 10,000 items in inventory that we can uh, add a pigtail to and we can customize it. Maybe the shop needs six feet of wire on it. Maybe they want it purple, blue, or green. We could customize that connector so that they can have an OEM application when they go to install it. And these are all OEM parts. You know, you can't, there is no aftermarket headlight connector for Kia. Right. right. No aftermarket headlight connector for Lexus. So you have to go OEM on those, and that's what we do. We make sure they have an OEM part. Well, that's a great thing. So now we're talking about wire damage and some of the applications, but let's drill it down to some real world talk. What are some of the most common damaged items, damaged wiring components that Aeromotive is fixing for shops on a daily basis? You know what's taken off? The Kia and Hyundai lines are taken off. They're affordable cars, and I like them. I think they're pretty nice. Yeah. I don't own one, but I think they're pretty nice. So what we've been finding on the front end are a lot of cooling fan connectors, horn connectors, and headlights. And let me give you an example because we have yeah. some up here. Uh, this is a cooling fan connector for a Kia. You can find it on the Sportage. Uh, you can also find it on some Hyundai lines. The nice thing about this cooling fan connector, most of the time, and I would say let's go high 75%, it's the housing that cracks. Right. Yeah, right? it catches on exactly. either a cooling fan or something and it's going to crack that housing. Right. So the shop can just R&R &R the housing. They don't have to worry about splicing this in. Wow. You don't want to splice wires, right? You're, no. You're cutting into something. Right. That's never good. So if they can replace and R&R &R the housing, they'll save themselves some time, obviously, and a much cleaner repair. 
and a lot of a hassle because typically if I'm going to go into the parts catalog and I'm going to look at it through the dealer I have parts or through my estimating system, it's going to tell me I'm going to need this whole thing. Right, right. Now here's another thing that's really uh, hitting us really hard or we're getting a lot of calls on, Nissan. Wow. This is a Nissan Altima harness and these three connectors mount to the engine control module. Now the engine control module is mounted behind the radiator, so the radiator collapses onto these connectors. So when they are damaged, most of the time it's just the back shell or the silver center one. Now we've re sold so many of these that we decided to make a training video for them. So we put the video on our website, then the shop could go in there, it's probably about five minutes long, they'll get a good description and a nice photo of how these disassemble and reassemble. So they spend five minutes on the computer looking at a video, 30 minutes doing the hour and hour time. Beat versus what the estimating system is going to tell me is a complete harness and about 30 hours of mechanical time at a dealership, right? Well, maybe not 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the shop would love it. Yeah. Right? No, probably on this harness assembly, you're probably looking at about four hours. Okay. Yeah, because I'm figuring most of the cars disassemble them, right? They're going to have the front end off, they're going to have the fender off. So the hour and hour time is not too bad. The harness assembly list is about 450 to 550. So pretty substantial savings. Okay. Yeah, but, and this is one that I don't have to track like through the interior and... Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Oh boy, right. if we go down that path, I could be here all day. You don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> that's a big savings when that I don't have to take the car apart. That so that's just great. I mean, the way they make these cars now, they're, they're, they're clean, they're fun to drive, they've got a lot of features and electronics in them, but all of these little connectors don't do well when we hit things at even five miles an hour. Oh, so yeah. those core supports want to fall back and protect, protect pedestrians and all kinds of things. Right. And it's creating electric hazards and high estimates so yes, it is. It, guys it's just a wonderful solution I used it for at least 10 years when I was doing my estimating and every time I would go out to a shop and share what we could do versus having to replace complete harnesses and order those expensive parts that was more repairs that the shop got to keep that month in the shop and a happy technician yeah. so um, every shop I walked away from that had tried you guys out became a raving fan and still talks about thank it today you. thank you very so, much I appreciate your help I appreciate the service it's wonderful so please go online visit their website, learn about all that they have, and even if you don't find your application on the website, be sure to give them a call and ask them, because if it's not listed, I bet they're already either in process or they'd be willing to try to take a look at it for you, because it's always an opportunity to have something absolutely. new to the inventory. Yeah, in fact, that's a good point. If I could just yeah, one absolutely. more time. Uh, uh, the industry has provided us with so much information that it really has helped us pinpoint areas like this. If it wasn't for the shops calling us, requesting an item, we would know what they need. So their input is really critical. That's perfect. Well, we always get better when we work together. So finding those vending partners that can help you do your job better and you can help them make the industry better, that's when we all win. So please visit the website. If you have any questions about the products and the services that they offer and you don't get your answer there, get contact me on Collision Hub. I'll be happy to share with you my experiences. I'll also be happy to put you in touch with some shops that have used them on the past and are raving fans of all they have to offer. So stay tuned to Collision Hub. We'll be back a little bit later from the show. Thanks. Thanks.